Well, you know, there's uh, interesting what I'm going to say. Uh, we're about to come out in December with uh, the version of the third Godfather that it was meant to be even at the time that uh, for various reasons it didn't. Even the title has been changed. And I think that people are going to be very dazzled with what really is in that film. Hi friends, welcome to the ultimate Instagram Live. Welcoming a true legend on our Instagram Live today. He's iconic, he's inspiring, he's profound and widely considered as the greatest filmmaker of all times. Not only has he made and directed scores of films, but he has a whole slew of awards given to him as an honor. In fact, I would say he's not even just a movie maker. He's an academy and an institution in filmmaking himself. His work in the Godfather trilogy, Apocalypse Now, among many several other films, has been unforgettable. And he's none other than Francis Ford Coppola. Thank you so much for coming live with us. It's such a privilege and what an honor. My pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. I hope you don't mind my look. No, your look is lovely. Um, all right, Mr. Coppola, there's so much to talk about. There's, you know, our, all our Indian friends, they're extremely excited about hearing you. They want to know everything. So I was just thinking that uh, what inspired you to get into the wine business? Because it was quite close to, uh, you, you were right in the, in the prime of making movies as well at the time, isn't it? You purchased Inglenook back in 75, if I'm not wrong. Well, yes, uh, it was the success of The Godfather that enabled me uh, to to have the money to be able to even consider buying anything, much less a, a, a beautiful wine estate. My first memory it was always wine on the dinner table. And, uh, and in fact, in America, as you know, uh, there was for years uh, from 19, whatever, 17, 18, the prohibition. The 30s, there was prohibition when wine and, and alcohol was forbidden. But right. the government did allow a European families, such as Italians, to make in their home, two barrels of wine a year for their own um, for their own consumption. They couldn't sell it, but you could have it. So my grandfather, who lived in Manhattan, who had seven sons, would buy grapes from the Napa Valley, and then they would all have to work in the basement to make the wine that they would drink uh, all year long. And 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 it sounded like so much fun. Ingelno clearly stands among some of the best and the most iconic wines around the world, with a history you know that goes far back up to 1879, and all the kind of work that you've built in. Uh, I've been to the winery a few years ago, but of course I've had the great privilege of tasting Inglenook wines at Pro Wine and, you know, trade fairs and, and occasions of those sort, and what an extraordinary wine it is. Inglenook is the first, is the first growth because it is not only of a certain quality that has everything connected with it that had at one point uh, associated with with greatness. In other words, Inglenook uh, made great wine 50 years ago. It made great wine 100 years ago. Of course, Chateau Margaux made great wine 300 years ago because there was no Inglenook before uh, 120 years ago. And, and it must have a winemaker that has made great wine. We, of course, have a winemaker who is making and has made great wine. And it must have, uh, it must be in one of the great wine regions of the world. And, and of course, the Napa Valley is now one of the great wine regions of the world. And it has to be the part of the great wine region that is considered the greatest part of the, of the great wine region, which, of course, is Rutherford. And, and mo most important, too, it has to have owners who will do anything and, and, and make any gesture to improve the wine, even the tiniest bit. Because yes. it's like a sailboat race that to make the sailboat go just a little faster, a tiny bit faster can cost millions of dollars. So, so all of those different difficult criteria is what's required to be a world-class or first graph, uh, uh, growth level wine, which is why I believe that Inglenook has achieved that. I, I remember our, our wonderful evening at Chateau Lafitte two years ago where we met, and uh, I had the great pleasure of meeting Roman as well at that, at that evening, where we tasted 16 iconic vintages of Chateau Lafitte dating right back to 1868. And I remember at that evening, Roman telling me that he actually enjoys a Shiraz, and I found out that you also make a Shiraz, which is inspired from his personal choice. What can our, our audiences look forward to from Inglenook over the next few years in terms of any changes, any, any, any changes to the winery or the wines in themselves? Well, or... So we are now built a new winery. In fact, underground uh, where the historic winery is, and it has 122 fermenters. Think how vast that is to have 122 50-ton fermenters 
so that as the, the grapes are harvested, they each go in a separate, and for a whole year, you get to taste and understand the personality of that, uh, that uh, parcel without being forced to blend it. So we believe that that is going to be a real step forward for Ingle Nook. In your opinion, what is the current opportunity and threat for Napa Valley as an overall winemaking region, in your opinion? Well, I think the greatest indication is the fact that all of the wonderful first growth companies in France are all buying land in Napa Valley. Already Latour has. I know Lafitte would like to. <clears throat> I know that Chanel has already bought the winery across the street. So the, the very fact that the Bordeaux producers are buying land at the same cost that it cost in, in Bordeaux indicates uh, they know. And in your opinion, what might be the threats from prohibiting that from happening uh, or reaching greater heights? Climate change. Climate change is the threat to everything. Mr. Coppola, I want to ask you, have you ever been to India? Yes, yes, I've been to Mumbai. Okay, lovely. Was that work or just... No, it was wonderful. I took my, uh, my granddaughter and, my, uh, and Nicholas, uh, uh, my nephew, and we went and we had some great, I love Indian food, needless to say, and we had some wonderful, wonderful food and we, we visited the Taj Mahal and we enjoyed ourselves tremendously. We love, we love India, we love Indian culture. Uh, if I could, I would speak Sanskrit. And in your opinion, what do American wines have that European wines don't? I mean, I'm talking about the top bracket. Well, that's like, that's like talking about women. You, in, in other words, what, what American wines have is that they're American, that, that, that there's, there's something in the essence of the culture, of the soil, of the place that is unique, uh, that, uh, you know, that, that, who is more beautiful, uh, an Italian girl, an Indian girl, or, or, or a French girl. They're all beautiful. Uh, what are your views of India as a market? What is your perception of India as a market? What are you hearing? Or what I, you I don't think about markets I, so much. I mean, in terms of, I, I, I know that there are people who, I know that Indian food is great. So that tells me that the experience of enjoying taste and flavors and spices and subtleties is, is, is a part of the Indian uh, identity. So of course they would enjoy wine. I would imagine they would enjoy wine, wine very much. Yes, I mean, uh, wine is the, is the fastest growing beverage in India right now. It's increasingly becoming more and more mainstream. It's the new media symbol of uh, sophistication, romance, celebration, success. Uh, so yes, wine is gaining a lot of popularity in India. Uh, and we have a fair share of good, good quality imported wines available in India, though. But our taxes are very high, as you know. It's a highly regulated market, and some of these laws are quite antiquated. Yes. Have you ever watched an Indian film, like even halfway through, or heard of oh, one? Yeah, or... No, I know there are some great classics, Hatha Panchali, and uh, many, many great. Uh, and I love the the uh, yes. Amira, Amira and there and and. Uh, and the wonderful musicals, uh, who I love, I love those. I, I would love to be in, I, 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 would, I wish my life were an Indian musical. How wonderful. I'm sure our Indian audiences will be delighted to hear you say that. What is the region of India that makes wonderful wine? There's a region called Nasik, uh, which is about three hours drive from Mumbai, where 90% of our vineyards are located. And we grow international grape varieties, like we grow Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, a uh, bit of Sangiovese, Tempranillo, uh, and in whites, we do particularly well on Sauvignon Blanc, Chenin Blanc, some dry styles of Chenin Blanc, and um, Shiraz, of course, and Reds, and, uh, and Chardonnay, a little bit of Chardonnay. We're struggling with Chardonnay, but we're well, getting maybe there. Maybe the next time you come and visit, you'll bring a, a good bottle of Indian wine, and we'll drink it together. I would love to try it. Please, it will be my pleasure. Godfather one, two, or three. Well, you know, there's uh, interesting what I'm going to say. Uh, we're about to come out in December with... Uh, the version of the third Godfather that it was meant to be even at the time that uh, for various reasons it didn't, even the title has been changed. And I think that people are going to be very dazzled with what really is in that film. Wow. I mean, that's really going to be something to look forward to. That's incredible. Yeah, the, the new title of it is The Godfather, Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone. Fab. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to look out for that, as are all everybody who's listening in. So it's, finally, going to be, it's going to be shown for the public at, or to a big audience in Los Angeles December 1st of this year. 
All right, guys, look out for that. December 1st, I for sure will be looking out. So finally, what's more fun, movie business or wine business and why? It's the same business. It's bringing pleasure to people. Yeah, I love how effortlessly you say that, but so many winemakers around the world don't get this. Um, but yet, to you, it comes so naturally. And, and that is what makes you, Mr. Coppola, so amazing and so incredible and so inspirational. Because so many, so many, and I don't want to take names, but so many around Europe even don't get that. They don't get the fact that, they, that the ultimate um, purpose of every wine is to give pleasure. And so that's what the business is all about. But Mr. Coppola, I cannot thank you enough for coming live today with me and sharing all these wonderful thoughts, every single one more inspiring than the other. So I wish you very good health, all the happiness and, and, and a wonderful time. And I will come and see you very soon. I really look and, forward and, to and that. And bring a bottle of, uh, of Indian wine. I will bring a few bottles of the Indian wines and we'll sit and clink a few glasses. Thank you so much.